Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we have a story of a man whose GF invited a guy while he was away. And this is what he finally did. Here's the full story with a final update. Yup, she emotionally cheated. We went through a rough patch for two weeks and I found out she invited her friend over to her place while I was at my parents for the time being. I confronted her today and I can't shake this gut feeling that something was up, and she has been seeing him behind my back lately. When I went to ask for her phone to check her text, all I got in response was I don't have any texts with him get effing real. Who are you trying to fool? The most surprising thing is that she has been cheated on before and for her to do this to me even though I've done nothing but show her loyalty is crazy. She refuses to accept the reality that she emotionally cheated. Probably because she doesn't want that label because she's been cheated on herself. Half hour later when I leave her place after getting my things she sends me a video of her Instagram story conversations, but not her iMessage ones and thinks that this is enough to absolve her of any guilt. Not counting the fact she probably did a clean-up job on her texts. The mental gymnastics and gaslighting is crazy. This post is just a rant to get this off my chest. Any good tips on moving on? Edit, thank you for all the kind words and experiences you guys have shared. There's so many messages to respond to but I will address things in a update post. Update, edit, thank you so much to people who gave me so much support last post. There was so much to reply to I didn't know where to start. Thank you thank you thank you. Prior context, I just need to get this off the chest because I just spoke to her brother's fiancé on this. In my previous post I didn't mention why we had a rough patch and the context. We had a rough patch because my ex feels that I did not love her in her love language enough and felt mistreated. At most I can say I was negligent in not meeting her enough in her love language and I should have done better 100%. I do not contest that point at all. When she needed time to think about our relationship she needed space for two days so I voluntold myself to move back to my parents willingly because the place was hers and she was not about to get kicked out of her own place. Day two comes around and it turns into two weeks. Two weeks later when we talk and see how we can meet each other in the middle, I ask her was he over when I was gone. She said yes. I immediately think that that is sketch as crap, even if you admit it to me. And mind you I have not met this guy at all. Then Sunday rolls around, yesterday, and all of the original post happens. Now today after speaking with her brother's fiancé, she installs the thought into me that, what if out of all of this she actually never cheated at all? Where do I go from there? In my opinion even if she didn't, she has not done anything right in making feel trusting of her. Rolls reverse she has innate trust issues to begin with, so whenever she asked me for my phone, I give it up immediately no questions asked. Now when it's time for me to ask for her phone, the only time when there is grounds for me to be distrustful of you, she has nothing to show me. And I quote I don't have any texts with him. This is where I feel a little bit gaslit. How is she able to, 1. Invite a guy I don't know over to our house that I'm partly renting, 2. Not show me your phone when we're at the summit of all of this trust conversation, and somehow she gets the benefit of the doubt. My brother's fiancé says to me, what if she were to say, I'm sorry for acting the way I did. I'm sorry for not showing you my texts but I deleted them. I need you to trust me that nothing happened between us. Do I accept that? I feel like I'm actually being gaslit in real time right now on this. I went from so sure that something has happened but I don't have the direct texts to prove it but now I'm wavering a little because of this new thought. The reason I still feel very strongly as I do is because on my end even though I lead us down the path of this rocky road because of my negligence in the relationship and not loving her where her love language is. That was all unintentional. On her end she intentionally invited him over and intentionally chose to not show me her texts. Give me the most charitable take on all of this guys. TLDR, feeling gaslit on this after talking to her brother's fiancé. To be fair, she heard both sides of this from hers and mine. But she and my ex have never met eye to eye on most things so I don't think there is an inherent bias involved. Final update. Hi everyone. Just wanted to say thank you so much for all the support and insights you have given me. Honestly I was wavering a bit but I remembered a crucial detail with your thoughts as well that made me seal the fate on this whole ordeal. Also before I proceed, I had no idea this sub was for married people. We were not married but three weeks from being engaged. I honestly didn't know but just needed a place to throw my feelings down. But now you guys are my support system and I thank you so much. I don't reply but I promise you I read everything. We were supposed to go on a trip in two weeks that we planned but obviously I do not want to go anymore. She texted me this morning if I was still going and quite frankly I'm pissed off the get go. I wrote a final note to her on my feelings on all of this and just know that you guys have contributed to this. I plan to send this over to her after work but I wanted to share with you guys my thoughts. I changed names around to avoid doxing. 
Final thoughts. Hi Lucy, you wanted a response on coming to Europe with you. I will not be. If you want to know how it got to this point from almost being engaged at the most you can read further ahead. But since you still plan on going, I hope you have a fun and safe trip. The tagging along will not be good for you or I. Because after reflecting on what has happened these past couple of days I realize I'm hurt more than anything. And there is a looming anger inside of me that I cannot shake. Loving you at your love language. Our initial fight that lead to all of this spiraling out of control was absolutely 100% my fault that we were lead onto this rocky path. I reflected on myself to think of how I didn't meet you at where you wanted to be met, and honestly I cannot blame anyone but myself. I recognize that you deserve better so when we talked on Thursday at your place, I was 100% ears on what you had to say and took accountability sincerely for every shortcoming I have. You have done everything for this relationship and I'm sorry I wasn't able to do the same. But this note is not about that. I completely recognize where I needed to work on and we both agreed on what needed to be done moving forward. This note is about your complete failure at every point to not only lose that trust but also did nothing to prove your innocence. I've taken all the accountability via our talk. But you have not once to this day, I don't believe, think you did anything wrong in the points following. If you do think you did wrong, I have not received any apology for it. Quite frankly I don't need it at this point. I'm looking to move on with my life after this. Double standards. I think what has been a thorn in the side of this relationship for me is the double standards that I saw unfold. You can interpret this as what you will but most people will agree that there is a double standard in play. Your innate mistrust in me initially because of your past has prompted me in the beginning to earn your trust even when there was nothing done on my end to earn your mistrust. I absolutely understand that you had something you went through and I made sure I never made you feel uneasy about anything I was doing or anyone who I was talking to. I've also extended it to making sure I'm never in situations where it can be misconstrued as something I'm doing is shady or put you in a position where you had to ask me about it. When you were hanging out with Dave for the past little while, I will confess to you 100% that I did not have any issues with that at all. Over the course of a few hangouts and things I noticed I felt a little creeping inkling of jealously coming to me. What I did to foster a healthy relationship between parties is to ask him to come over for dinner because I want to. A. Get to know him, and B. Realize that I have nothing to be jealous about. In my eyes this is the most healthy way to go about it. Jealousy. I think you were very set on me being jealous and wanted me to take a strong position and ask you to cut Dave out of your life. Unfortunately in my past relationships I would've. But I trusted you as a part of my life that you would not do anything to hurt me and not even cross boundaries that would make me assume anything. Since you expect that out of me, I assumed you would innately do the same for me. Jealousy is something everyone experiences, how we go about handling that is the outcome of maturity. I do not think for one second that this was a bad move on my part and I would do this again for my future relationships. I won't lose my trust in people because I know people deserve my trust regardless of what has happened in the past. When I asked you to invite Dave over, you didn't do this until I pressed you the second week in a row in asking. I firmly believe to this day and there will be similarities later on. But I don't think I would have ever met Dave if I hadn't asked you to bring him over for dinner. Our two-week break. When you had needed some time after our initial fight, you wanted to take two days away from me to do some thinking. I willingly voluntold myself to leave since the place was yours and I do not want you to be kicked out of your own house. The second day when you told me you needed two weeks, I was honestly at rock bottom and directionless. Home at my parents' place didn't feel like home to me because you were my home. I wanted to come home to you so bad but I respected your space enough to give it to you. I honestly will go back and apologize for coming in when you weren't there to grab some stuff I missed that I needed for two weeks. I honestly didn't know what I was missing and needed because I had such a short time to grab my stuff. It's not every day you get kicked out for two weeks on a short notice and are scrambling to know what essential items you need. I'm sorry if that made you paranoid but there was no ill intention there. The Thursday of our makeup talk. When I came into this conversation, the advice I was given was to just listen. No matter how right I thought I was or how much I wanted to make my points, I honestly just listened. Because in our initial fight I had not heard you out completely and I wanted to rectify that by making sure everything you had on your mind is addressed. I even asked you if I heard you out completely and if there was anything you or I missed. Dave coming over during my time away. I had this feeling that he might have come over and the fact when I asked you and you told me immediately made my heart sink. I don't know if you think you can clean your conscience by being honest about that part but the fact I removed myself from your place I was partly renting to give you your needed space for you to do some healing and reflecting on our relationship. Only for you to invite him over while I was gone is the most disrespectful thing I've ever experienced. 
which if we look at double standards again, I cannot even fathom doing this to you. And when I told you I do not trust you, you still could not even comprehend why. You make the comparison of Sarah and Sam coming over but try to make it the same as Dave coming over. I know Sarah and Sam and they're your close girlfriends. Dave is a stranger whom I never met and you have never made any steps to proactively introduce and make him known to me that he's only a friend. I had to do the heavy work for you. For you to equate Sarah and Sam is the same as Dave is the most asinine thing ever. To this day, if I never asked you if he came over, you would have probably never told me which is quite disgusting. Your friends told you about boundaries and letting me know, and I don't know why they're making so many excuses on this issue. There's obviously an inherent bias here. Saturday after our makeup. After reflecting on our Thursday talk I honestly wanted to take the right steps forward and make things better to prove to you that I can do better. I planned out a brunch date for Sunday and even bought you those coach slips you wanted. It's not much but I wanted to make the right first steps. That Saturday evening I invited you out to hang out with Zoe and everyone since she was hosting arcade party thing. You declined because you had dinner plans with Sarah and Sam. That is 100% okay. You later on mentioned that Sarah flopped so your plans are now with your cousin Tammy. Again 100% okay. Only for me to find out that you actually hung out with Dave that night. Now you can say that Tammy also flopped as well. But from that point on, I never got a text from you to see if you wanted to come join us later. It was easier for you to hit up Dave to hang out and you would rather hang out with him than me. And I can't confirm this but he was probably over to your place as well. Sunday of our breakup. During all of Friday and Saturday night I was honestly developing a gut feeling that something wasn't right at all from you telling me that he was over. I honestly glossed over it too quickly to process what was happening in real time. A guy who I don't know was over at the place we share together while I was told to stay out for two weeks instead of two days, while you were supposed to be healing and thinking about our relationship. This is a 100% repeat of my previous point because I want you to know what transpired. I do not care for your outcomes of what happened when he came over because the fact he was allowed to come over and I am told to stay away already makes you untrustworthy. When I came over to your place, I honestly made up my mind that I cannot be with you anymore. The constant thoughts over my head, and really looking back if I did ask you to cut Dave out, that would not change anything that has happened. We sat down and had our chat about all of the previous points above, you at this point were at an untrustworthy status. I did not have any evidence to suggest that you cheated on me. I don't think that was enough to conclude so. Opportunity to prove me wrong and make me look like an idiot for assuming so. I gave you your opportunity to set us on a path of me trusting you again which was to show me your phone. At the beginning of our relationship, when we accidentally stumbled over the texts you had with a previous hinge date but these were texts when we were going out. I asked you for your phone to read them but you refused to show them to me. That is a massive red flag that I honestly did not want to make a big deal out of and let it slide. This time around I will not let it slide, and ask you for your phone a second time after you saying why do you need to see my phone. And after pressing you one more time for it, your best answer to me was I don't have texts with Dave I walked up and left in disbelief because of how stupid you think I am, and even if I didn't say it at that point, I was done with you. For you to protect your secrets and for you to have the golden opportunity to come clean in all of this, you did not even take the chance to show me your texts. An hour later you decide to send me a video of your Instagram story texts, to try to prove to me that nothing shady was going on behind the scenes. I don't know if you think anyone you tell this part to or for myself that you just assume we're all idiots but it's 2024. You make plans and coordinate meetups through text, in nowhere in that video did it ever have plans to meet up or times. The hard part of all of this is going back to the double standards thing, is that I won't even hesitate to show you my phone when asked, because I know that you have trust issues. When it comes time, at the final stages of where this all went, the golden opportunity for you to prove these allegations wrong, by showing your phone to me, you refuse to do it, and not only that you gave me an answer I thought was quite effing stupid frankly. What if you never did anything? I honestly thought about this and thought, what if there is a world where you did nothing? Would I still want to make this relationship work? The answer is no. That trust between us could have been mended but you did not take any steps to work towards it when given the opportunities to. I cannot go on thinking you were able to. Invite him over to your place while I was gone. Not show me your texts. And still get away with it. To anyone who gives you the benefit of a doubt, I'm honestly surprised it's been granted to you. To anyone looking outside on this, it's blatantly emotional cheating. If there was ever a world where you were to come to me and say I'm sorry I did not prove to you earlier, and I'm sorry I invited him over, I don't have any texts to show you that nothing went on but I need you to trust me. I would not take your word for one second. 
I am supposed to put all that aside from your consistent failures at every point in turn for earning my mistrust and to just forget about it because trust me absolutely not. I would be the biggest idiot for doing so. Viewpoints. I honestly think we see things differently. However, I didn't let that difference prevent me from reflecting on the very valid criticisms you have of my treatment of our relationship. I reflected and acknowledged the steps that are needed if we even want to salvage the relationship. Everything moving forward from the texts and seeing Dave behind my back is something there should not be a different viewpoint on no matter how you spin it. Cognitive dissonance. I will honestly be surprised that by reading this far into this note you still are set in believing you did nothing wrong here. I feel gaslit in a way because you cannot accept the reality of what you did or didn't do and you are dodging accountability from all of this. It baffles and angers me the most that this latter part of the rabbit hole that it's not clicking for you. You invited a guy over to our place whom I do not know, after you asked me to move out for two weeks instead of working on relationship and problems. You refused to show me and quite possibly deleted incriminating texts of both of you. You hung out with him on Saturday night, when you told me you were going to have dinner with your cousin. What else do I need to conclude that you are emotionally cheating on me? I need you to reread this three times to make any logical sense of this because I can't get there. Your words of nothing happened I did not cheat on you do not align with your actions one bit. I did not make the assumption of you cheating until you refused to show me your phone. That is the final nail in the coffin that lead to this. At this point prior, it was all mistrust but now has been upgraded to you cheating, based on your actions or inaction. You should know better. I think the fact that you were cheated on by your ex only makes this look absolutely worse on your handling of all of this. The ironic part is that you have done more shady things in this relationship than I ever have. I don't know if holding you accountable for something such as trust is something you just cannot comprehend because you would never see the day you would ever be questioned on being trustworthy. Walking out. I don't take you for granted and that in the three instances I've walked out on you I've overreact and take things out of proportion. If you were to follow through with it and leave as well, I would have 100% deserved what was coming to me. I do not escape that fact and I greatly underappreciate what you've brought to the relationship and the sacrifices you've made up until this point. That is honestly such a big flaw of mine to quit when things get tough and I have nothing more to say but I don't deserve you at that time prior to all of this. Intention matters. I think with all of the things leading to this, again I lead us on this rocky path of an unstable relationship. That made you feel like you lost the spark with me and subsequently your attraction. I wholeheartedly know that I did not intentionally do any of that to you. It takes two but I know I failed you. The difference here is that I did not betray you or your trust and quite frankly you have no respect for this relationship. Your handle on this matter however was 100% intentional. You chose to invite him over during a turbulent time in our relationship. You chose to not show me your phone because you have something to hide. My failures and shortcomings 100% do not warrant you to act and move the way you did. Even after acknowledging your mistreatment, that is no excuse for what I've received after. And, on the facts of the matter I cannot ever trust you. Maybe I'm wrong and that you actually did nothing, but you built an extremely unhealthy environment at a time of relationship stress that was the opposite of rebuilding and healing. There is more evidence outlined here of you emotionally cheating than you not cheating. You have not presented anything to prove yourself otherwise, and you get the benefit of no one ever knowing as you probably cleaned up the texts you had with Dave. I'm so sad things turn this way, I really thought I could have saved what was left of our relationship. And quite frankly I want to believe nothing happened, but you failed and mishandled every opportunity to prove your trust to me. What's crazy to me is you felt like I needed to earn your trust when there was nothing I did to lose it, but you couldn't feel the same way about me when it comes time for me to ask you of it. This note at this point is more so for myself to grieve and move on with my life. I will live with the fact that I sent us on this rocky path, and I regret the way I went about not treating you right. But I want you to be honest with yourself and see the wrongs you committed afterwards. I've loved you with all of my heart and I'm sorry I didn't show you in the way you wanted to be showed. I hope by me writing all of this that I can start to heal and release this anger and hurt that's been building. We both have our separate paths to walk on for healing and I wish you all the best in life. Final thoughts. At Saturday evening I invited you out to hang out with Erin and everyone since she was hosting arcade party thing. You declined because you had dinner plans with Sarah and Sam. That is 100% okay. You later on mentioned that Sarah flopped so your plans are now with your cousin Tammy. Again 100% okay. Only for me to find out that you actually hung out with Dave that night. Now you can say that Tammy also flopped as well. But from that point on, I never got a text from you to see if you wanted to come join us later. It was easier for you to hit up Dave to hang out and you would rather hang out with him than me. And I can't confirm this but he was probably over to your place as well. 
Everything moving forward from the texts and seeing Miguel behind my back is something there should not be a different viewpoint on no matter how you spin it. Walking out, thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.